Hey everyone, hope you guys are having a great day and are excited for another video. And we will finish up the remaining landmarks that we need to know found in the bones of the head. It's been a long and tiring process, but after this video we can go ahead and move along to the rest of the axial skeleton. In the past videos, we have learned lots of anatomical landmarks that are found on specific bones. And because of that, we have to parent it back to the bones that they originate from. Now, there are some anatomical structures that are made up by more than one bone, and those are the landmarks we're going to learn today. All the landmarks that we are learning today aren't parented to any bone because they're made up of more than one bone. The first landmark that we're going to learn is called the calvaria. The calvaria is considered the roof of the skull and is often removed during dissection to expose the brain. This is called the calvaria. Just inferior to the calvaria, we find a structure located on the lateral aspect of the head, often found in the buccal region. We learned that this process right here is called the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, and this one being the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. However, when we refer to this structure as a whole, it's just called the zygomatic arch. Just superior to the zygomatic arch, there is a depression seen right here, and it's located just superior and a little anterior to where the ear would be. This depression is called the temporal fossa. If we go ahead and look at the anterior view of the skull, we have this space that would house the eye. This little space right here, made up of seven, seven different bones, is called the orbit. Within the orbit, there are two little slots. One right here, mainly made up by the sphenoid bone, and one just inferior to it. Again on this side, the superior slot, and then an inferior slot. This superior one is called the superior orbital fissure. And then the one in, underneath it is called the inferior orbital fissure. We have another space located smack dab right here in the center. And this is called the piriformis aperture. Piriformis means pear-like or shaped like a pear. And you can kind of see that right here that it's shaped like a pear. Now if we go ahead and remove the parietal bones, we can see into the cranial cavity. In the cranial cavity, there are three depressions that we need to learn. These depressions are located right here, one right there, and the last one being the most posterior. These are called the anterior, the middle, and the posterior cranial fossa. And that applies to all of them. Anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and posterior cranial fossa. And these depressions help make room for certain parts of the brain that we'll learn when we go over the nervous system. From this view, we can actually see quite a few holes that we've already learned. There's a few holes in the sphenoid bone that we've already learned, as well as in the occipital bone. However, there's a couple of spaces that were created as two bones come together. And we're going to learn those right now. Some of these holes should already look familiar to you if you studied parts of the sphenoid bone and the occipital bone, such as this one right here is the oval foramen of the sphenoid bone. We have the optic canals of the sphenoid bone. We have the foramen spinosum of the sphenoid bone. We learn lots of different holes when we learn the neurocranium. However, there are two different sets of holes that we didn't ever learn. The first one being 
right here. It's just posterior to the petrous part of the temporal bone and it's found on the anterior portion of the occipital bone. This hole right here as well as right here is called the jugular foramen. Again, we don't parent it to anything because it's made by two separate bones. And the last space that we never identified in the past videos were these holes right here. Those holes are called foramen lacerum. And they are made up by the petrous part of the temporal bone as well as parts of the sphenoid bone. We can go ahead and have a closer view of these spaces by looking at this image right here. To review, we have the round foramen of the sphenoid bone, the oval foramen of the sphenoid bone, foramen spinosum of the sphenoid bone. We have this new landmark that we just learned made up by the temporal bone and the sphenoid bone, which is called foramen lacerum, as well as these holes right here, jugular foramen. And we can also see the condyloid canals which I discussed in the video where I went over the anatomical landmarks of the neural cranium. Awesome! And these are the remaining anatomical landmarks of the skull that we needed to learn. There's one more bone that we need to go over that's found in the head and it's called the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone is a very simplistic bone, it being only made up of three anatomical landmarks. The first one being the body of the hyoid bone. The second part are these two little projections that look like horns, so they're called lesser horns of the hyoid bone. And then we have these posterior projections back here, and they're called the greater horns. of the hyoid bone. Here's another view of the hyoid bone in relation to the size of the head. We can quickly review the landmarks we just learned. This being the body of the hyoid bone. We have two little horns which are lesser horns. And then these posterior projections are going to be the greater horns. And those are all the landmarks that we need to know for the bones of the head. Now in future videos, I'll discuss the anatomical landmarks found in the vertebral column, as well as in the ribs, in the sternum, and all the other remaining bones found in the axial skeleton. Hope this quick video was helpful, and you guys have a great day.